Fred started doing construction as a teenager. He started out working with his uncles all over the city. Through years of word of mouth, his business actually grew enough to keep him pretty busy and get him a decent little Cadillac to ride in. Everybody wanted Fred to do some work for him. Bathrooms, kitchens, basements, it really didn't matter. Fred would do the job better than anybody around. He always looked at himself as a perfectionist, making sure every swing of his hammer was precise and every cut of his saw was smooth. One day he was off for a job working for a major construction company as a supervisor. Everybody was happy that he would finally get a job he could retire from. He could finally get a chance to show the world how great his skills were. Since he ain't go to school or nothing and didn't have a bunch of certifications, the workers and management looked down on Fred. He would have to go through a bunch of hoops just to get any of his ideas and the plans. And he would have to cuss the workers out just to get them to follow orders and get back from lunch on time. Fred started to grow tired of the company, but he didn't want to let the hood down. He decided he would work twice as hard now. He started being more hands-on. And one day, he showed up one of the top carpenters in front of all the young guys. Fred wasn't trying to be a jerk, but he just wanted the job done right, but the guy refused to listen to him. So the good old boy Fred showed up already hated Fred for having a position in the first place. And now, he wanted Fred dead. He fantasized about hurting her. And as Fred finally started to gain the respect of management and his team, he planned on how he could bring Fred down. The company landed his biggest contract ever, and they put Fred in charge. Man, he got right to it, writing out plans and giving orders. The good old boy waited for a chance to sabotage Fred's plans. He went into the computer and changed the measurements of the materials Fred had to order. You might not know, but in the construction field, measurements are everything. Everything has to be perfect or else you're gonna lose thousands. And in the case of this job, hundreds of thousands of dollars. And of course, Fred was fired. His boss cussed him out so bad the whole office shook. Fred tried to plead his case, but boss man wasn't hearing it. On his way out the office, he saw the workers standing by their trucks laughing it up. Fred walked up to the good old boy, accusing him of changing the measurements. Everybody broke them up, and when they finally started to settle down, the old boy spat in Fred's face. Fred went clean off and grabbed the two-by-four and started whooping everybody. The police were called, and long story short... Fred got a few years to think about what he had done. The hood's heart was broken. Everybody knew they did the brother wrong, but they painted him out to look like a crazy man hell-bent on revenge. In prison, he kept to himself, fixing things around the cell block and in the yard. Nobody messed with him because everybody needed him for something from time to time. The guards would even let him keep a few tools on him. One day he received a card in the mail from an anonymous person and it read, Too bad you can't build a ladder to climb out of that hell hole you in, boy. Fred instantly started screaming in anger. He tried to make the best of his situation and leave it behind him. But Fred losing everything still wasn't enough. This was the last straw. And Fred just snapped. I don't know who they think they messing with. I don't play that. I got some for you though, boy. Don't worry about it. That night, Fred used his tools to break out of his cell. His knowledge in construction helped him escape through the ventilation system. He made it to the roof and down to the yard where he used his tools to get through the gate and back on the streets. Fred picked up a few skills in the street. He broke into a car and hotwired it, 
and made his way to the city. He siphoned some gas from a car and made his way to Home Depot. He broke in and stole a few bags of his favorite tools, went to Lake Street and got him a Polish and fries, and now he waited for the morning. He watched the workers get to their trucks and he waited for old boy. When he finally saw him walking up to his truck smoking a cigarette and drinking some coffee, he could feel his heart speed up and he could feel his brain straining. He followed him to the job site. The old man was on his Bluetooth headset talking away, so he had no clue he was being followed. Once he got to the site, he stayed behind while everybody else started to get to work. After listening to the favorite part of his favorite radio show, he went into the building. The lighting in the building hadn't been fully restored yet, so they relied on mostly the sun and temporary lighting ran by extension cords. Fred followed them deep into the building, pretty far from the other workers. He watched while his soon-to-be victim set up his work area. It was pretty dark, so he set up a light and pointed it in the direction he was working. Once he was settled, he was interrupted by a loud bang. He got back to working, but a second louder bang stopped him completely this time. I told them to let me finish down here before they start messing around. Y'all get back up them stairs and let me finish and y'all finish on up there. He didn't get a reply from a voice, but another bang. This time he stood up and looked around. Y'all better get to work. Stop kidding around. Then his light went out. He scrambled to the cord and traced it. He could see it been cut. He ran to his tool bag, but he slipped. As he stood up, his hand was smashed by a hammer. Fred stood over him with his hammer raised above his head. The good old boy's face was twisted with fear. My Fred said to him, You just couldn't leave me alone, could you? Just had to hate on me, didn't you? I'm just trying to make a little money, earn a little honest day's pay, but you just had to mess with me, right? I'm going to build that ladder you wrote about. Maybe you could use it to climb out your own grave. Fred swung his hammer again. Unc always told Fred to clean up after your work, so he took his time to clean up the mess he made. He saw his victim's phone and picked it up to call the boss man. Good morning, how's the job coming? We had a major accident out here. I need you to send Ocean. Who, who is this? If you don't know, you're going to know real soon. Is this Fred? You fired me, and you know I was set up. I ain't never messed up like that. I produce better than anybody that ever worked for you, but you dogged me out and fired me? Fred, Fred, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. I had to. I almost lost the contract. How are you and Mr. Taylor's phone anyway? You, you know, uh, how many nights do you think you can go without sleep? Because as soon as you close your eyes, 